So let's talk temperatures tonight. And what I'm talking about is the internal temperature of the Nintendo Switch. Now there's been a lot of curiosity around this. How hot does the system actually get? And I had that same curiosity as well. So I figure, well, I can figure it out pretty easily. So why not do it? I've already taken the system apart several times now. Why not actually take it apart and leave a thermocouple in there, a little thermocoupler guy, and just let it measure temperature as I play the system. So I did some uh, very shoddy uh, put, putting it back together with the thermocoupler actually there. I didn't. I only put a couple screws in just to make sure it could actually peek out the top of it. You'll see it here. I managed to get the thermocoupler very close to the chip. I actually have it pressed up against the side of the chip. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to get the thermocoupler on the die. I probably would have had an easier job going behind the board, but I figured I was able to wedge it underneath and get it right up against there and that thermocoupler would not move easily at that point. I then put the metal cap back on and then the heat sink and everything fit together okay. Coming out the one side it, where the RAM was, I had it kind of go between the RAM on the way out, but it worked out fine and the system played all right like that and it was able to get a pretty good temperature. So before I started that whole mess, I took a temperature of the room that the switch was being tested in. This was at 19 and a half Celsius. We like to keep our house a little cooler around 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's about what that is. So the thermocoupler coupler was pretty accurate before I even started this. So I first tested the switch in handheld mode. I set it up kind of on like the tabletop part with the kickstand out because I did manage to put the back back on kind of squeeze it. You'll see pictures of it here. And I had it coming out the top, but I did manage to play Zelda in tabletop mode, no problem. So while I'm playing it, I do watch the temperature kind of go up as I play. It starts at a pretty low amount. When I first turned it on, the fan doesn't actually spin. It takes a little while for it to have to ramp up because I think there's a floor for the temperature where the fan will actually turn on. I think it's around 30 or so because when I first turned it on to test the thermocoupler, I noticed the fan wasn't spinning. So I kind of left it on with the back off and checked it and it was around 30 31 or so the fan started kicking up and actually spinning so i think they have it set around there for the fan to turn on and anything lower than that it will cool passively this probably helps save battery life but once the fan kicked up it did stay around 32 degrees celsius when it was an idle after about 20 minutes what i like to do is i just leave the system either playing zelda or idle or any of these tests i did i measured the temperature after about 20 minutes or so of either gameplay or sitting there at idle and most of these are going to be me rounding up for the most part if it's like 0.5 or above i'll round up if it's 0.5 or, or 0.4 or less i'll probably just leave it at whatever that temperature is so i did record a temperature at idle of 32 degrees celsius it was a little less than that it was like 31.8 or something like that but on in handheld mode with tabletop kickstand up and everything. It did get to about 32 degrees Celsius after 20 minutes. Did not go up from there. It kind of stayed level. So that's fine at a decent, uh, that's a pretty good actually. That's not bad. That's around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe a little less. Uh, that's not bad at idle, just sitting there running. Uh, then from there, I did pop Zelda in and then played it for quite a while actually. Like I said, about 20 minutes of me just running around Great Plateau. I did everything I could to try to stress it. Continuously spinning the camera, running through water, fighting people, jumping off of large cliffs and just kind of flying, you know, with the glider. And I ended up peaking at about 41 degrees Celsius. It was a steady climb. Eventually it got there and then it kind of fell down and then it kind of went up, fell down. It kind of just ended up steadying right around 41 degrees Celsius. I think it was more like 40.8, but I just put 41 just to round up. I wasn't as interested in the handheld mode temperatures i do think it gets hotter in the dock and i was right it does get warmer in the dock so i took it i was able to still fit it into the dock with my thermocoupler cable coming out the top which is good i guess because i ended up going through the top and made it a lot easier dropped it in there and i let it sit there for about 20 minutes i did turn it off just to let it cool down for a bit and then popped it in the dock turning it on and it ended up idling and sitting right around 38 degrees Celsius, actually. So it does get warmer right away just from idling when it's in the dock. From there, I did my test with Zelda, where I played for 20 minutes, ran around Great Plateau, did everything I could to stress the GPU and CPU combo. And I ended up peaking at about 46 degrees Celsius, which is pretty good overall for when it's in the dock. It's ramped up frequency-wise. It's displaying 900p trying it you know trying to stay at 30 frames as best as it can that's not bad at 46 degrees celsius but i wanted to try a game that i knew was native 1080p and it was 
probably pretty hard on it. So I loaded up fast RMX and this actually got the system warmer than Zelda did. It actually ended up peaking right around 49 degrees Celsius. I was, I was really trying to get it to 50. So I was sitting there for a while, just watching it, watching it, watching it. And it, it was at like 48.9 and just sat there forever. I could not seem to get it over that 49 degree mark and then try to get it to 50 degrees Celsius. I just couldn't. It stayed right around there. 49 degrees Celsius is the hottest I could get this system while in the dock, which is really good. That's actually not very hot at all in terms of electronics. So to put this into perspective, Linus over on Linus Tech Tips, they did this whole thing with water cooling their PS4 Pro, and they did something similar to I did where they took a thermocoupler, put it on or around the chip. In their case, they put it on the other side of the board. That works as well. I just wanted to try to get as close to that chip as I could. In that case, I touched the outside of the chip. Again, I do think if I was able to get on the die, temperatures probably would be a couple degrees hotter, but this gives us a roundabout idea. In their case, on the back of the chip, it's probably the same case where, again, it's gonna be hotter on the die, but they were able to record 72 degrees Celsius on the PS4 Pro. So yes, the Switch is much cooler than the PS4 Pro, but keep in mind the PS4 Pro is pulling a lot more power through. Also keep in mind though, it has a much bigger heatsink and a much bigger fan to accommodate for that. So this for the switch is, is pretty good. I mean, that's temperatures are good. This is to the point where I don't think heat is affecting the defective units. I don't know what is affecting the defective units. There are a couple things though that could be doing that outside of the typical firmware issues where it maybe it updates and the system just bricks for whatever reason. I have no idea why, but there's also the chance that underneath of the chip where it holds the board, they use leaded lead free solder balls. Actually lead free solder balls have a melting point of 217 degrees Celsius. So as the chip gets hotter, it can stress those solder balls and crack. There's also a chance that out of the factory, they did not set the chip 100% correctly in some of them, and those solder balls were weak in certain points. After time, they crack, or maybe they weren't contacted completely at all, and they were much more brittle and, and fragile. There's a chance that they just cracked, and then you get things like blue screen of death, or orange screen of death, or ones that you turn on and the sound goes crazy and garbled and stuff. So it's hard to say what the problem is coming out of that factory. There are definitely defective units. I think it's obvious. It's all over the internet, but... Uh, a couple questions, how many are there, obviously, and what are the extent of the issues? Are they, the GPU and the CPU is coming off the board or they're not attached fully from the factory? And again, how many are there? So, but I can tell you just from my tests alone, um, I hope somebody else does something similar to this as well. Maybe with uh, a better probe, maybe, I'm not sure. There are probably people out there who have much better equipment than what I have here. But in that case, I hope they would do it as well to compare results with mine. Or if we ever do get to the point where the system is hacked, we can load up temperature sensing programs that would actually use the chips temperature sensors that are built in and give us an exact or at least as close to an exact result as we can get. Take this with you guys from this video. The switch is not cooking its chip. The chip is well within threshold. Okay, so the threshold of the X1 where it will start to throttle. And of course, throttle means it will kick the frequency down, lowering performance to save the chip or the system because it's getting too hot appears to be around 75 degrees Celsius based on a lot of developer conversations that I've seen for the TX1 and so forth. So at 50 degrees Celsius, let's say 51, 52 with the margin of error, it's well below the threshold that the X1 would be in any kind of danger. And keep in mind also, I did this test without that metal shield on the back because I could not fit it back on there. And that's obviously used to dissipate heat. So there's a good chance that if I was able to put that on there, it may accommodate for a few degrees here and there. And that may have been, my results may have been even lower, but keep in mind, the temperatures are fine on the switch. I don't think the switch is cooking itself or anything crazy. I think there are just other issues with defective units out of the factory, which include possibly not attaching the chip fully. But other than that, guys, let me know what you think about the temperatures down below. I will see you next time.